What's up guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. So today we're still working on the tow pig. We gotta get this truck so that it's consistently pulling us to the track with no issues. Don't forget we got a giveaway going. Go to turbojohnracing.com forward slash lucky. Get entered in our free giveaway so you can win one of those cool flip coins. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Thanks guys. All right guys, so one of the things I did, it was very easy to do. I had this on my other car is I done a TS performance flip chip. It's got six settings on it. It's very easy to do. And basically what you do, this is for mileage and to make it just run a little bit better. Take that all, take the computer out and then the chip goes in here. Then you just use duct tape to make sure there's no dust and stuff getting in it. So that should work. The other thing that I'm doing right now, and this is gonna hopefully help the, the truck a little bit. You can see the, the key is on. There's no check engine light. So there hasn't been a check engine light on at all. It's been idling a little rough, but not terrible. But I finally got my handy dandy scan tool. And this is just a regular scan tool. I have forgot that this thing has the ability to read the data stream. And I got this thing off of Amazon a few years ago. And so I was looking at the data streams. You look at this, I clicked it and I clicked okay. And see now it runs at zero PSI, but there is a problem. The problem is it's not hooked up and I took it off because I'm working on it, but you can see this is the, the plug and it's reading zero now. Oh yeah, look at that. I didn't even notice that. Well, that sucks. I might have to get another case. JB Weld for the win. I don't even know what that, that sensor is, but <laughs> just noticed it. But the exhaust back pressure is right there. And so, this tube, I just ordered a kit because the sensor was completely plugged up. So I took and uh, used a drill bit and got it un unclogged here. Okay, so that's plugged up now. So let's go look at the data stream. That's a problem. So this thing is pegged out reading 53.3 PSI. And so what that's doing so when the computer, it automatically thinks that it's got 53 pounds of back pressure, essentially. So then it opens the wastegate from what I understand. I don't really understand exactly how this system works, but I know when I unplugged it, the exhaust gas back pressure went to zero and the truck started running smoother. And so I was happy with that. So we, I just got from Amazon, it was like $45, a new sensor and a two this one in to make sure i don't have a wiring issue okay the new sensor is connected so hopefully this is reading zero if it's still reading 53 then that means we got a wiring issue okay so it's reading 13.8 so it's reading it's a uh it's just based on atmosphere so that is probably accurate so that is good crawl up under the truck and see how hard it looks like it's going to be to get to all right guys well it doesn't look too bad to get to you see right here in the fender well if you, on the passenger side, it goes in right there. I hit it with some WD-40, and it is a little stuck on the tube. You can see it's starting to kind of break the tube, which that's okay because I got a new one. So we're going to thread it on off. We're going to replace it. It doesn't look like it'll be too bad. All right, guys. So this has not been too bad so far. You can see I already got this off down there. Let me get my camera down there. Uh, first thing you want to do, that's what it's actually bolted to, and it's bolted to this little plate what that plate goes to first thing you want to do is take that belt off it's kind of hard to get to it down there but now that i've actually got the belt off of it this is out and wow i already broke it i broke it and twisted it off so clearly mine may have been in bad shape but basically you got to get it loose here and then that just bolts up there uh looks like they had some silicone on it so we'll put some more silicone on it let's finish getting the bottom off and then we'll have this thing this thing will be licked here in a second. It is. I mean, so it's just literally just loosening that up now. So that ought to spin loose pretty easy. And then I'm gonna make sure that is clear. I'll crank up, well, no, I'll probably just blow some brake cleaning and run my line in it. The other one seemed to be clear, but uh, we'll see. So that's pretty easy and not too bad. Let's see if it goes on as easy as it comes off. All right, so here's the whole thing. It's off. And this is the part that was on the, the manifold. And you see it's just rusted. And that's why it did all this twisting action here. The thing that is interesting though, I bet this thing was broken as well. And the reason why I say that is you can see 
how thin it was right there. And but check this out. This one right here is I think is a real good indicator that mine was leaking there as well. And you see it's all corroded. There's a lot of soot in it, but it's very dirty. It's not a clean break. So probably it was probably leaking as well. So I'm glad I'm going to replace that. All right, so all I'm doing here, I have threaded some weed eater line down in there just to make sure that that is clear. And it is. So now all we gotta do is start the reassembly process. All right, well that was much more problematic than what I thought it was gonna be. But it is on and installed, those two little bolts down there. Those are pretty easy to get to. But that tube, that's a solid tube, so it's kind of like a brake line. You have to have it exactly perfect in order to get it so that it'll screw on there. And so probably what happened with mine is when I was taking it off, since it bent that, uh, it bent the tube and twisted it up, I'm pretty sure that it probably bent my bracket up there. So I've been fighting with it for about an hour, but I finally got it on. The easiest way to go on from what it just was for me anyway, may have got complete lucky. I had the big part, the ferrule screwed onto the bracket up here loosely and only put one bolt in the bracket where it bolts to this pump. And I think that's the problem. I think that's what I was doing wrong. I was putting two bolts in it and kind of snugging it up a little bit. But I had a little bit of play, but not enough. But once I took this one bolt out over here on this side, I was able to get it down, start it on the bottom, tighten everything up, and then we're good to go. So now the question, the real question is, do we have back pressure reading like it's supposed to be? Let's check it out. Let's see, guys. Data stream, key off. All right. Well, that's good news. Boom, y'all. Back pressure is fixed. All right. Okay, so the next modification. This is something I just found out about. Uh, was could potentially help the air conditioning and it's they call it max ac youtube is wonderful it is absolutely wonderful and i had a couple people mention this on my video last time but basically the heater core it gets hot fluid from the motor all the time and you got a blend door in there so you do get some difference in heat i watched one video the dude uh basically put this on the car heater control valve this is off of a 95 Ford Ranger. And basically with it open, it flows like normal. And you can hook vacuum, you can hook it to the inside of the car so that when it's on max AC, it actually closes this and then it routes all the fluid away from the heater core. And apparently they used to do this all the time and now for some reason they didn't on this one. And certain vehicles, I guess, still have The dude didn't have air conditioner with this valve bypassing. It was amazing. It had 91 degrees coming out of the, the dash vents. And then with this open, it was 101 degrees. So he got a 10 degree rise. So 10 degrees is a lot. So if my air conditioner can cool 10 degrees less by doing this, hopefully it'll be significant enough. The next thing I'm gonna do with the air conditioner, if this doesn't make it more suitable, I'm gonna take the evaporator off and I'm gonna clean it because I know that it does have some dirt and debris on it just because these do not have cabin filters. And so I, when I changed the resistor down there to make the fan work better, I noticed that it was clogged up some. So that's gonna be the next thing. So let's change this real fast, should be pretty easy. There's two hoses back on the back. Basically, I'm gonna just clip those and they'll go on and uh, it should be pretty freaking easy. Let's see. All right, so this thing is now on, very easy to do. I just basically cut into the heater core lines. Those are the two going into the heater core. And this just goes right in. It does have an arrow on it, so you wanna make sure you get the arrow you know, for the correct flow. And when the vacuum pulls on this, it's gonna shut it and basically just reroute the coolant so it does not go through the heater core. I think I'm gonna just hook it up so that it, it runs straight off of the vacuum source, the main vacuum source here. In the summertime, I don't want it to have flow into the heater core at all. All right, so we're taking this thing for a little test ride. It feels like a completely different truck with the tuner on it. And of course it's reading back pressure. I mean that's on the 75 horsepower tune. 
and just part throttle is just unbelievably better. It's crazy how much how much better it does. So you see, we got a little bit of drive pressure, a little bit of boost pressure. Wow, even at five pounds of boost and part throttle, this thing feels a ton better. Now, some of it could have been because the back pressure sensor was malfunctioning. That could have been one reason why it was feeling real, real laggy as well. But all right, guys. Well, overall, I'm freaking stoked. The truck. We'll see how it does pulling. Uh, hopefully, we'll be racing, testing, and tuning at Thunder Valley on Sunday. Y'all come see us later. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe.